Hello and welcome to part 3 in a video series of content creation primarily for but not exclusively Second Life using primarily but not exclusively Blender. In this video or maybe part 2 of this video we will be using Photoshop to combine elements that we create in Blender as well as some base images from the internet as you may be able to see to create the item in front of us as well as the very quick model creation and the UV mapping. This is not intricate UV mapping, this is very basic um, to get you going. This can apply to lots of simpler objects, maybe rooms and things like that. Um, but I wanted to get a video out, I have had a busy few days, so hopefully this will make up for it. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I should mention I'm not going to cover every single button press I do. I have done my best to cover these uh, locally as much as I could in previous videos. If I go into any extensive version of anything, I will explain it as I go through. Um, otherwise, please bear with me. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is in this window on the right, turn on background images and then click add image. I select open, where I have previously selected my image for our photo frame that we are going to recreate. Uh, we'll start with shift A, mesh plane. Start off by cutting it up the middle with a subdivide and deleting the vertices on one side. I will then go into add modifier. We haven't used modifiers yet, so this will be our first one. I am going to use the mirror. As you can see now, I have returned to the full square. And then from here, begin to shape out our wooden panel. I'm going to just bring my camera over on top of it. Let's bring that out a little. Possibly bring it back a further piece. I will bring this one out first. I'm going to select this face and use inset faces. Um, what I will need this window. I select my thickness here, and then I for some reason have the offset and the boundary. As I've mentioned in the previous video, you can turn off these boundaries where it is doing all solids by uh, selecting the boundary. But anything that is not connected to a face will be left alone. I have a depth preset in there for unknown reasons at this point. I'm not sure why I already have that, but I do. Um, but we'll make, take advantage of that because that seems like a good height. And we'll leave that as is. I'm just going to bring this over. This looks like it's a curve to me. So I'm going to bring it down about 45 degrees, not completely. Put a nice little curve in there. Subdivide smooth. I'm not really bothered about where it puts it because I am going to grab this out to a sharper angle more of my liking and then bevel it. Not too much. Get my own little curve in there. Okay, what do we have going on here? Looks like we have another little break there. Followed by another one there. Followed by yeah, so we will start off by W inset faces. We already have that depth preset and the uh, boundaries turned off. And do another one here. Oops. Okay, we're getting some nice lines in. We have another curve here, which comes flat out about there. And this is going to be our edge. So we'll bring that back. I'm just going to subdivide that straight up and bring it out to a curve of my liking. I could bevel this again, but I don't think we need it on such a small part. And then I'm just going to extrude this out to where the uh, wall would find it. What I have now, oh, size, Z. I'm 
I now have the issue of finding out these 45 degree points. So, what I'm going to do is uh, stretch it out by about 25%. I hope that will work. Rotate 45 here. Rotate minus 45. I haven't quite got the same thickness as before, so I'm just going to uh, undo that. Size X, we'll try 1.4. Let's get 45. And this looks much better. We'll take minus 45. Now we have these 45 degree angles that we can take up to our edges. This point, I'm going to select all, UV map. Uh, I could unwrap straight away. I'm just going to shift space up into here. This looks a bit of a monstrosity. I really wouldn't want to be texturing this. So what I'm going to do is U and then project from view, which will give me a very nice straight on projection. I'm going to bring out the X axis a little and now I want to catch the edges where I went flat backwards. Now, the problem I have is when I gra try and grab them, uh, I'm grabbing the faces that are in front. What I'm going to do, hit grab X, 0.5, just to move it over, and then select the ones before there, grab X, and then 1, and then grab X minus 0.5. Gets me a nice little border that I can texture. I think we're going to have the same here, grab X minus 0.5, yep. So grab x minus 1, and then grab x 0.5. Okay, shift space to come back into the regular view. I am now going to hit apply. Oh, I have to come out of edit mode. Hit apply. I can now select this one on the left with control L. Grab it and move it over. So if I select all, we now have these two pieces. I'm now going to duplicate those with Shift D, rotate by 90 degrees, and then let's just grab all of these in this one. Now grab X now. Just use the span on the window. I'm just going to grab and place these in the right place for now. Deselect all that on that side. Move over approximately. Let's try removing doubles. See if we get rid of anything. Nope. No good luck there. No. Oh. <laughs> and these ones are way low. So uh, let's grab Z to here. Here is going to be the front parts. I'm going to use C and then size X zero, size Z zero, W move doubles. I will pause while I do this for all of these uh, vertices. So I will be back. Okay, coming back to this, um, I'm just going to finish up this last edge. What I'm going to do here is my SX0, SZ0, and uh, on this corner as well. Now, where you have the points where it's only the two points meeting, an alternative method, oh, sorry, alternative method is holding Alt M, hitting at center. I can then click, shift click, shift R to repeat the last action. Um, And there we go. You can see it's doing exactly the same thing. It's a bit of an easier method that I should have mentioned first. Just uh, move any doubles from here. 
have a quick look over, make sure everything's it's lined up. There may be an issue there. One second. Now, of course, I missed these points while I was uh, doing this, so I will just double check up on this side. Like we're good, covered, okay. So now that we have our frame, we now have it in its four parts. And hold Ctrl and L to select an island on the UV map. Now they all face the same way, which is done deliberately on my part because when you look at a picture frame, all the pieces are cut from the wood and then pieced together. So this is technically how they would look. Um, at this point, I don't really have much reason to UV map in any other reason way. But if I was to, I could select these lines. Oh dear. Now you can see they haven't gone out to the edges, which implies to me that I have made a mistake in joining up some of my uh, pieces here. But I'm not sure what it is. So, for this video I would usually investigate heavier, but for this video I will carry on. Control E for edge tools, mark seam, which now has these red lines. Now if I was to select any of uh, any face within here, I hold Ctrl and G, sorry, Shift and G, I can select by material image area, um, which isn't a problem with this. Uh, right now, I should have saved that for later, but we'll come back to that. If I hold, sorry, Control L, much like I did select islands in here, it would work in the same way. I could now select all and uh, unwrap, and it would give me these weird looking islands again. I don't want that, so I'm going to Control Z that and get my islands back to where they were. What I am now going to do is select all these interfaces here. E for extrude, S for scale, down to about where that gray border is coming, and then E and Y. Going to Ctrl E, mark a seam on here, and then the same around its edge. Ctrl E, mark seam. Ctrl L, select here. If I U unwrap that one, it comes out very wonky, um, but we could probably fix this easier than arranging it otherwise. So we will hit W, line Y, just selecting these the same as I would anything else. I can hit Shift R to duplicate my line Y. Now going to W, align X. You only have obviously two dimensions. Two dimensions in uh, your UV image editor, so you don't have your z-axis, only the x and y. x being cross, y being upwards. And now I'm going to scale this up because it's not as important. And uh, yes, select all. Control L, rotate by 90, scale it along the y-axis a little bit here. it down. It's not a very important piece of the uh, texture, so I'm not really worried about it. In fact, I will rotate it back by 90. Select all. Now I'm going to make a new image. Image, new image. I'm going to be 1024 across, but only 512 up. Turn off the alpha. As you can see, everything's stretched out, so I'm going to SX.5. Bring everything back into scale. I could
could at this point come into UV and average island scale which would give me a much better average of the size of everything but as you can see it's going to be a bit weird with the sizing actually now we will work with this Just make sure we are given a space because it will make a difference when we do the wood on the frame size it in so nothing is sticking out perhaps make these borders a little larger in the islands I apologize you can't see me key casting while in this window um, I didn't think about that what I'm using is Control L and then just G to move. Control L selects the whole island. Okay, this looks good. At this point, I will turn off the background image. Close up this little window. Move into the scene view here. And then I have bake mode set to ambient occlusion. I'm just going to do a quick bake. Alt Z for textured mode. It's very sharp. I don't think I want it that sharp. I'm just going to W Shade Smooth. We'll do another bake. It's a bit looks softer. Where are we at? This is good. This is very good. Okay. So we now have our basic shape here. What I'm going to do is select the square in the middle, hit F for fill, which has now created a new plane for the middle, which is where our image will go. I am going to U, project from view bounce, and create a new image in there. And for now, 512 by 512. No, in fact, no, 512 by 512 is good. And as you can see, it's taking up the whole boundary of the image. What I'm going to do is assign this to a new material. Now, if I create new material, it assigns it to everything. Everything now has this material. But if I create another one, we'll call this one picture and we'll call this one frame oops okay here we go now I can select by face as I mentioned before shift G material which we should not oh, here we go as you can see on the side when I go between them this box sticks between picture and frame so I can shift G, also by image, which will select the outside. Um, there's not a lot of point in me showing you the same from the uh, from the actual image itself, because it's only got that one frame. You can have up to eight materials on an object to import into Saturn Life, which is how you get your different faces, which you can select differently, assign different textures to use transparencies, make certain parts glow, all the rest of that good stuff. So uh, I'm going to once again do a quick bake. And there we go. Here is our base frame. I think I'm going to have to cut here. We will cut into a second video uh, where we will go into the actual texturing process. Okay, so thank you very much.